Well, good morning, good evening, good afternoon. The name's Defender, and welcome to Banjo-Kazooie Nuts and Bolts. Developed by Rare, and released for the Xbox 360 in 2008. Banjo-Kazooie Nuts and Bolts is that game in the franchise. The game that tried something new, and some people enjoyed it for what it was. Other people said, eh, you tried something new, it didn't quite work. And then there, was, there, were, there were those people who absolutely lambasted it for such a decision. And really, no one would be able to deny, to deny that this game basically killed the franchise. <laughs> there's, there's, there's really no argument with that. But uh, I guess we should get started and see what all the fuss was about. Because uh, I got opinions. I've got opinions. As you can see, just from the menu, you know, everything looks fine. You know, you got all of your options available. Everything kind of moves with that kind of rare flair that you'd expect. But uh, problems arise immediately because you only have one save file. Like, I don't understand why games only give you one save file. That's so rude. What if someone else wants to play? Then you just got to start over. It's just, no, it's bad. Always have more than one save file. This, this is why we always t like we have three. Three is like the industry standard. Just just have three save files. What's the problem here? I don't know. But enough about complaining about lack of save files. Let's begin, shall we? Once upon a time, there lived a heroic bear called Banjo, a rather loud bird called Kazooie, and an unpleasant witch called Gruntilda. When Banjo's sister was kidnapped, the bear and bird rescued her from the depths of the witch's lair, overcoming many perils and speech impediments to send Gruntilda tumbling to her doom. But she was nothing if not persistent, and surprising nobody, the old hag soon rose from her grave for round two. Our brave heroes once again stood in her way, and this second showdown ended just as badly for Gruntilda, who really should have quit while she was ahead. Many years have passed, and peace reigns in Spiral Mountain. So what became of the bear, the bird, and the witch? Hello. Well, uh, they've gotten fit. Also enjoy the Conker's Bed for a day music. It's been ten years since you were invented. Oh, 
Oh, looks like Grunty finally made it back. These are our heroes, everybody. This this is Banjo and Kazooie. This 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 is what you wanted, right? You, you wanted them to be fat. And you can't jump. <laughs> I'm sorry, that just Oh, we've forgotten how to talent track. Great. Well let's check the dumpster first. As you can see there's lots of stuff. Alright, enough of that. Let's uh let's make our way to uh Spiral Mountain, I guess. And don't worry, you're not doing this for very long, so <laughs> Oh. Oh, this is this is where bottles died. R.I.P. Bottles, Banjo and Kazooie's mole associate tragically died here in 2000 but managed to rise from the dead about a week later. Is there another info point? No, it doesn't look like there's any way to shuffle forward. Okay. That's fine with me. Let's just, uh, let's just keep going. Yes, yes, I know, I know. Please, please just let me walk forward. There we go. No, it's Skeletor. <laughs> oh man, get ready for a clash of the titans. Huh? Who are you, monitor head? <laughs> Second rate game characters. <laughs> Log. Hmm. <laughs> That's a little extreme, but okay, whatever. It's not like we were doing anything better. No. Oh. Isn't this a kind of an improvement for us, though? Th yes, actually, I would. I'm sure the audience would enjoy that, too. Consists of collecting as many pointless objects as possible. I'm very good at that. Oof, the self-deprecation on Ghoulies. Yeah, Ghoulies is good. It is generally good. Also, hello, Pug. I'm doing it. I'm going. I'm going real fast. I can do it. Huh. Alright. What do you have in terms of... <laughs> Very well then, failures. Alright. Yeah, but only several. Not more than several. Uh, yeah, but then again, few people have been in as many games as Mario. Ah, much better. Oh, interesting. Horrifying, but interesting.
You won't be needing those. They were rather outdated anyway. Says who? Really stupid. Hey, look, we're all. Yeah, we'll, we'll we'll get some work on it. And away we go. This this is what everyone wanted in a high definition Banjo Kazooie game, right? Uh, insulting the previous genre of game you were playing, and and cars. It's exactly what the what the. Uh, Focus groups wanted. <laughs> Screw you, Pong Face. I wanted those moves. Yeah. Well, guess what? Now nobody gets them because Banjo and Kazooie don't get games anymore. I've already saddened everyone and myself in the first five minutes. This is gonna be a long way through, isn't it? <laughs> oh boy. Showdown Town, which is our hub world. <laughs> hey, people like Jiggies, okay? Oh, there's Grunty. <laughs> Impatient bird of dubious popularity. A grunty gets a cat. <laughs> a cat named Piddles. With anger management issues. I do think we got the better deal here. Alright, so it's time for everyone's favorite thing. Forced tutorials! Use the right trigger to pick stuff up. Like so. And just take this over here. Oh, hello, Mumbo. Alright, hold on, let's, uh... That's what really makes this game annoy me. Not only do they make it not a platform, but they basically indirectly said, screw platforms and everyone who likes them. Crappy cars of the future, old man. Yeah, it's like... They're trying to get comedy value out of deprecating themselves, which works to a point, but it's like, you know, d bird of dubious popularity. 2008 Rare, you know people like these characters, right? Like, we want to see more of them? Did you even want to see them again? Like, I don't know, it's just... I don't know. <laughs> Alright, so that introduces the Mumbo Crate mechanic. Basically, we can look around and find parts that we'll need in order to build the vehicles that we need, we'll need to actually play the game. So we got a seat, wheels, engine, fuel, tray, taxi seats, ammo, and some standard building blocks. Alrighty. 
So yeah, this is one of the few things that we'll actually get to, like, run around and collect and stuff. Almost like this is a Banjo-Kazooie game or something. And listen, my snark will die down once we get past the, uh, early tutorials of the game, because this is really where the game is, like, at its most cynical. Actually, no, there is one other thing, but, uh, I promise you, there is a good game in here somewhere. But you can enjoy this nice, uh, Mumbo Skull remix. Quit the tutorial. Well, we, we still have to build the vehicle anyway, so let's just go through it. Press A button to select. Yeah, they went way too hard on that, and the vibe is just weird. It almost gives the impression that this game was made out of spite. Not entirely untrue. But uh, that requires quite an explanation, so let, let's, just, let's just get through this first. Yes, yeah, so let's just get a tray. So yeah, you can move your uh, building view with the right analog stick. And move pieces with left stick. Snap it into place. Also, I'm sorry, I didn't realize the Xbox 360 fan would be so loud. I think the microphone is picking it up. Please let me know if it is so that uh, I can somehow get rid of it and figure something out. Because I've never streamed an Xbox 360 game before. Alright, so we just gotta... These here... And... Boom! Nothing Stupid Bear would get so far. Look, we've been, what, five minutes in? I think I can follow directions. Alright, so you, every vehicle needs a seat, because, you know, Banjo and Kazooie need a place to sit. Alright, so now we need power. This is where our engines lie. This is basically what helps our vehicles, you know, actually go. Boop. And, of course, we need some fuel. Alright. Alright, so now we have access to it whenever we need it. And this will be our, um... Default vehicle for going around Showdown Town. It's thinking about loading. It's thinking about it. It's thinking about letting us enjoy the rest of the game. All right, so we can flip things over if they've been, uh, knocked over. Left trigger. All right, well, let's get in. So yeah, use the right trigger to accelerate and the left trigger to brake and reverse. Thankfully, you have unlimited fuel in a showdown town, so you can just kind of go wherever you need to go. But uh, let's take the opportunity to explore our surroundings. Ah, of course. Huh. Excuse me, I'll do whatever I want. I'm the one holding the controller here, mister. Though we do eventually have to go to Log in order to actually begin. We're gonna have a quick look around. Yes, yes, I know how to go up a slope. We do have a map, which is very nice. Alright. But as I was trying to say before I was rudely interrupted... I'm still being rudely interrupted. But yeah, the uh, little blue thing around the map is the speedometer. 
the more it fills up, the faster you're going. Okay, can I please, please continue? Okay. So just like uh, in older Banjo-Kazooie games, you can pick up musical notes. Musical notes are, are our currency, which we will spend on various things around here. So try to snag as many of them as you can get. If you get knocked over while you're in a vehicle, you can use right bumper to right yourself. This is a warp pad, which you'll be able to use to teleport around Showdown Town once you collect, uh, once you find more of them. And yes, you can, in fact, uh, run over Gruntilda in Showdown Town. If I can actually do it, if she will stop getting out of my way. But yeah, th that is one benefit. You know, you can, you can, you can, you can run Gruntilda over. <laughs> Okay, that's pretty enjoyable. I, li I like that. But there are, in fact, different colors of musical notes. The bronze notes are worth one, silver notes are worth five, and gold notes are worth ten. Generally, notes will be um, scattered in, like, a collection around the area. So, in, like, a little bundle. Excuse me, I just want one musical note. That's all I need. Thank you. Okie dokie. Let's go around and try to find some more mumbo crates, since these will unlock more parts. Drop it right in the old trolley. Excuse me, coming through. I want that. And yes, you can in fact bring multiple crates to Mumbo's at one time, which is very convenient. Plus, they kind of have like this magnetic effect on them to help prevent them from completely tipping and falling over. Alright. Excuse me. Oh. Alright, we're here. We're just gonna plop. No, come on. There we go. Crack up open for me, Mumbo. Yes, I know. That's what I need you to do, please. Also, you can't scroll text manually. You just kind of have to wait for it to happen automatically. Alright, so we got some more uh, building pieces, which is good. We got an egg gun, which we'll be able to use to shoot things. We got a Fulgore's Fist. For those of you playing at home, Fulgore was a character in Rare's Killer Instinct fighting series. Just a heads up, um, since I am very much not familiar with Banjo-Kazooie Nuts and Bolts, on account of I don't play it very often, uh, I have the official Prima strategy guide here that I'm going to be using a lot. So, uh, you'll have to forgive me if there are points where it's just like Defender has completely stopped because he has forgotten what he needs to do and desperately needs help, so. But hey, at least I got something. That That's more than most people had when they were playing this game. Oh, I got some wheels and more fuel. But yeah, just kind of Looking at chat already, uh, I can tell that there are some very conflicting opinions about this game, which is understandable. There... This game is not... ...loved like the original is, or even like Tui is, which even these days Tui has become somewhat of a more divisive game. But it's just... It, really, talking about the legacy of Nuts and Bolts is very strange. Because, well, it what both what it did and in how it was constructed, uh, pun not intended. Because you have to remember that really this all kind of happened because of uh, the rare buyout with Microsoft. Oh, I fell. Oh yeah, you also have regenerating health in this game. So as you can see, my health will replenish after a few seconds of not taking any damage. But yeah, for those of you uh, unaware, time for a little history lesson. Uh, in the 90s, hold on, Mumbo, please, I'm trying, I'm trying to do so much. Like, in, you know, 
everyone knows of Rare's golden age in the 90s when they were working with Nintendo, starting with the uh, 1994's Donkey Kong Country. And for many years, both on the Super Nintendo and on the Nintendo 64, the uh, relationship was great. Rare made, you know, the games that they're most renowned for. D the Donkey Kong Country Trilogy, Banjo-Kazooie, Conker's Bad Fur Day, all under, uh, at the house of Nintendo. But, uh, when the new millennium rolled around, th uh, things kind of got a little messy. Since, uh, basically the idea- oh, I need that note. How do I get up there? Oh, by doing that. But basically, um, uh, in the early 2000s, Microsoft basically had made a bid to purchase Rare from Nintendo. Uh, Rare was actually kind of shocked that Nintendo just kind of sold their shares of their company so that Microsoft could buy Rare since, you know, they had worked with Nintendo for almost a decade at that point, you know. Rare was a full-blown second-party developer. So, it's just, they were just surprised that Nintendo would just kind of give them up so easily, but indeed they did. And so, uh, Rare became the property of Microsoft. And really their first game under Microsoft kind of showed basically the future, since their first game was the game that was dissed in the opening sequence, Grabbed by the Ghoulies, which was released on the original Xbox in 2003, I think. And people back then, they despised it because it wasn't like the game that the Xbox was known for. Like, look, the Xbox was only known for Halo and Xbox Live. Let's, let's be honest with ourselves. The original Xbox was not a smash hit. It, it did what it needed to do. It established the foundations for what, for what made the Xbox 360 so great. But the Xbox itself was not a major success. I mean, it outsold the Nintendo GameCube, but it was going against the PlayStation 2. Ain't nobody was going to outsell the PlayStation 2. Is there a note up there? I'm, is there no. Okay. But yeah, Grab by the Ghoulies was not a critical or commercial success, which is unfortunate because Ghoulies is actually a pretty darn good game, if you ask me. It just... It was not released on the correct system. If it was released on the uh, GameCube, it should have been fine. It, I think it would have sold much better. We found another warp point. Go us. But yeah, after the 2005 remake of Conker's Bad Fur Day, Conker Live and Reloaded, uh, Rare had kind of had the idea of doing something with Banjo-Kazooie. The initial, like, idea for what Nuts and Bolts would eventually become was going to be just a remake of Banjo-Kazooie. Granted, in a more rare kind of way, in that there'd be little differences throughout the game, which would become much more obvious as the game progressed. To the point where Banjo, Kazooie, and even Grunty would be questioning the developers like, what are you doing? This isn't... This isn't Banjo, Kazooie, at least compared to the original version, which honestly sounds kind of awesome if you ask me. But the devs kind of thought that, uh, maybe that's a little too predictable in terms of, like, what we want to do next. You know, just remaking an old game, even though, I mean, have you seen any kind of fan base? Like, ever? They only want the old stuff. Or, they respond the strongest to the old stuff, I guess I should say. So, that idea kind of got scrapped. The second idea for Nuts and Bolts was a brand new Banjo-Kazooie game, but in the kind of style of that Grunty would be much more direct in her kind of messing with you. Basically, you would go around exploring new worlds, and uh, Grunty, using sophisticated AI, would have her own kind of uh, objectives to complete in order to directly mess with you and stop your progression through the game. Uh, this also sounded like a really awesome idea. Well, that was... Uh, that was horrifying, Mumbo. But, even back then, Rare kind of knew that the, uh, that the sophistication of the AI necessary to let Grunty do such things was just simply too complicated and would take way too much time and programming knowledge, so 
That idea was eventually scrapped. Uh, the third kind of concept, and the one that would eventually stick, is sort of a platformer, but with the ability to solve the puzzles in your own way. Like, building your own solutions to the platforming challenges. And again, that initial concept sounds awesome! But maybe they thought, mm, like, just platforming. What could you build with platforming? Probably not very much. So, it kind of went into a more, you know, building vehicles kind of style that you could solve your challenges by creating new vehicles. And thus, well, we have this. Hold your applause, everybody. Well, I mostly agree about what you said about the OG Xbox. I do th also thank the OG Xbox for Jet Set Radio Future, Ninja Gaiden, and the beginning of the golden era of Bioware console RPGs. Jade Empire, KOTOR, Knights of the Old Republic. Yes. The Xbox definitely ha Excuse me. Definitely had good games. No doubt about that. But, again, I stand by it. You know, the thing that everyone remembers is Halo 1 and 2 and Xbox Live. I guess it's finally time we go up the stupid mountain. We, I think we stalled long enough. Hmm. Come back for that in a moment. Oh, 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 there we go. Hold on. Nailed it. See, so can't do anything with that yet. No argument there. Yep. Let's see, we're gonna actually climb up a uh, log's tower. Just because we can. Oh, I need the uh, I need the cart here. Oh, what? Are you serious? Why did it put me down here? That doesn't make any sense. There we go. I do like, however, that uh, the driver's seat is filled by an inflatable banjo and kazooie. What's this? Are we? Is this is this actual platforming? Oh! Holy crap! We're, we're we're actually jumping around. We're navigating stuff. Sound the alarms! We got, we got, we got platforming. We, we have platforming in a Banjo Kazooie game. Call the presses. Halt everything. This, this is, this is, this is a revelation, people. Let's climb up this uh, power cord. Time for another tightrope. And yes, I am balancing myself by moving left and right on the uh, left analog stick. Oh. All right. Almost at the tippy top. Easy, Banjo. This is an interesting camera angle. And we made it! Oh wait, can I even do this yet? I'm gonna have to climb up here. No, I can't! Let's crank this. Alright, screw off, game. That's not cool. I didn't actually know that was a thing. Well, at least we get a nice view of the world. That's some kind of consolation. I'm gonna, gonna give Banjo blunt force head trauma, because that's how sad I am. Uh, 
Oh, I somehow didn't take- <laughs> Okay, that was pretty funny. Alright. Alright, what do you want? Just- So yeah, Game Globes will be how we uh, unlock new stages. Let me get my car. Which apparently I can't just summon to myself because it'll put me back at the bottom of the ramp. No, please don't fall off. I've already endured enough sadness today. Put that there. Please tell me I have enough room for this. Nope. Let's see if I can't finagle something here. Oh, that's fine. Alright, let's go. Let's go down the rope. Or, not the rope, the slope. Oh, boy. Ugh. Alright, get the globe. And this will open the first world available to us. Nutty Acres. I like to think of it as a classic banjo homage. It's also just, you know, how games work. Alright, so we'll have to collect our first Jiggy. Before we do that, let's drop this uh, Mumbo Crate off. Plonk. Oh, it fell out of the, s the zone. Alright, open it up, Mumbo. Oh, we got some cruising lights, a plant pot, hey, it's Mr. Pants, and a windscreen. Neat. Excuse me, Grunty. Take that. Alright, so why don't we enter the first area? Nutty Acres Act 1. Welcome to Nutty Acres. In this kind of old TV intro style. Not sure about that. But yeah, all the characters in Showdown Town will play different roles in these worlds. That's kind of a nice touch, I like that. That was a good intro. I do like coconuts. They fire in spurts, don't you know? <laughs> Unusually dense nuts. Well, at least it's nice to see that uh, Rare continues there blue humor on occasion. Also, Kazooie's portrait is invisible here. I don't think that's supposed to happen. Oh, there she is. Alright, time to engage with the gift of the gab. 
What's up, Klungo? So yeah, characters with uh, Jiggies above their heads have challenges. This is how we'll earn Jiggies throughout the game. Uh, as you can see, there are three rewards to collect, but uh, I'll explain that more once we actually collect them. What's up, Klungo? <laughs> oh yeah, just like at, in the end of Banjo-Tooie, you know, Klungo swears off working with Gruntilda. And he is one of the good guys now, so uh, he'll help us out. Nuts burn easy. <laughs> Looks like your nuts are in for a roasting. Get across the land to the farmyard as quickly as possible to discover the cause of the smoke. So, uh, as you can see, this is a Log's choice. So basically, Log will give us a contraption in order that we have to basically play the challenge with. with. Which... Doesn't that kind of defeat the entire purpose of this game? Like, the whole thing is supposed to be about building vehicles, and yet... For a good number of the challenges, you're just kind of stuck. <laughs> you can wimp out, though. That's funny. I was like, I thought this game was supposed to unlock my creativity, but there's really nothing less creative than being told what to do, but, eh. We, get, we have to get through the early game first, where, you know, I get all of my griping out before we actually get to, like, the good stuff. We're just gonna go, we're just gonna go this way. But yeah, this is a real easy challenge, as the first one should be, which is why I am failing it. Just get to the, uh, get to the farm. Come on, you can do it. You can do it. There we go. All right, we're here. What's up, Mumbo? Yeah, well, you can skip lunch, but I won't. Oh, we did it. All right, so after you complete a challenge, based on how well you do, you'll earn a prize. You get 10 notes for the lowest score. You get a Jiggy for doing well enough, and if you do really well, you get a TT Trophy. TT Trophies will enable us to earn additional Jiggies. But yeah, that was our first challenge. Not bad, not bad at all. But uh, let's take a quick spin around here because there's actually something else we can do. First, we can ram into you. Also, please enjoy the nice little uh, motif of Treasure Trove Cove. So we keep following the path to collect the notes until I can show off the other thing that uh, you can generally collect. But first, we gotta avoid the grunt bots. These are basically Gruntilda's minions in this game. Really, their only purpose is to just annoy you, which they are very good at, don't get me wrong. Thankfully, we can just uh, smack them with our wrench by pressing the X button. This is how we'll attack stuff. Mumbo's nuts. I'm sure about that. Uh... No, that's the portal. Hold on, let me check my map. Okay. Aha! There, there, you can see him. Just like in Banjo-Kazooie and Banjo-Tooie, there are Jinjos scattered throughout the place. They have little smaller challenges for you. And uh, if you can solve their problems, they'll give you a Jinjo token, which we'll use later. So in Jinjo Fetch, just find an item and bring it back.
Oh, an, ac an actual banjo, huh? So yeah, this is a player's choice game. You can use any blueprint that you have, but uh, we'll only need the trolley for this, so let's, let's just get started. Thankfully, the Jinjo said that we can find it uh, in Mumbo's Nuts. I'm, I'm sure we can. I'm sure we can. Alright. Oh! Got the banjo. Let's get out of here. Yeah, as you can see, this game is very physics-based. So, uh... I hope, uh, I hope you didn't fall asleep in, uh, your high school physics course. Like, uh, most of my classmates in that course. <laughs> I actually like physics as a course, but I was never very good at uh, at it. That gives us a Jinjo token. And by the way, you don't have to walk into the token to pick it up. It just automatically, boop, goes into your inventory uh, after you complete the challenge, which is nice. There's still one more, uh, Jinjo challenge to collect, right over here. Hello, little guy. This is a Jinjo speed challenge. Reach the target speed shown in your speedometer to win a Jinjo token. Well, I'm very fast. I don't know about Furious, though. I like prizes. Thankfully, uh, the default trolley is more than a match for this challenge. We'll just go down the nice, big, steep slope. <laughs> oh, okay. That was, that was insultingly easy. We've got another token. Let's see, we should be able to see... We can't see the uh, per act like information. Oh, I don't need the vehicle. Let's just let's just go. But yeah, that's the general process of a act in Banjo Kazooie Nuts and Bolts. Complete challenges to earn jiggies and find Jinjos and solve their problems to earn tokens. Then just do that for like the next twelve hours or so, and bada bing, bada boom, you finish the game. It's pretty simple. But now for probably one of the most, like, baffling mechanics in this game, the Jiggo Vend. You need to take the Jiggies to the central bank in order for them to count, which the game calls banking a Jiggy. How creative. But in order to do that... Yes, yes, I was just about to explain that log. It's like I've played this game before or something. Get close to the bolt, and press and hold the X button to lock onto it. Then rotate the left stick to rotate the crank. All right, and that produces a Jiggy. Then, we gotta take the Jiggy to the central bank in order for it to count. That's the first Jiggy. <laughs> Yesterday's bear. Yesterday's bear. Yesterday's bear. I would find that annoying. Oh, don't worry. It somehow gets worse. Trust me. But yeah, I still have no idea as to why they made it that way. But we've gotten some blueprints we can make. Ah. Huh. So yeah, Humba Wumba is our shop. She provides us with uh, additional parts and blueprints, which will be nice. First, before we do anything else, just out of sheer spite, I am going to go back and go to that uh, Jiggy Tamper, which we saw at the top of uh, 
Logs Game Factory. Those basically just add jiggies to your uh, t bank total for free. No strings attached. But yeah, that's how you collect jiggies. Completing challenges puts jiggies in a world's jiggy bank. You then have to crank the uh, jiggy vending machine to get it to spew out the jiggies. Then you take it to the central bank and deposit them. Again, I don't know why they did that. But genuinely, I have no idea. Alright, let's, uh, let's run this back. There we go, okay. Alright, we're back up here. And doing that adds a free Jiggy to the total. But thankfully, for collecting two Jiggies, we get a Game Globe to Logbox 720, the second world of the game, which goes back over here. So yeah, we're just we're just gonna take a shortcut by uh doing this. Still not dead. Remember, the only health point that matters is your last one. <laughs> Easy banjo, you're just sliding down a slope very slowly. I don't think all that screaming is necessary. So yeah, if, you're, if your vehicle loses pieces, you can use the right bumper to grab them and put them back on. Thankfully, we actually cannot take damage in Showdown Town. And so we're just gonna... Ooh. Hello? Thought you could hide that from me, did you? I mean, I guess technically you did, since I drove past it a few times, but not anymore! Okay. Uh, so going back to the legacy thing, now that I know I'm not going to cut the part out... Um, Banjo-Kazooie Nuts and Bolts was the last time that Banjo and Kazooie basically headlined any game. Um, and yeah, they basically, in terms of like, a franchise, have been dormant since then. I mean, there were the uh, Xbox Live Arcade ports of Banjo-Kazooie and Banjo-Tooie, and those are good, and those are the versions also include in the uh, Rare Replay collection. So, you know, that's good. That, you know, they have, like, definitive versions of the games that they're known for. But, really, aside from that, they, un until a couple of years ago, they had not appeared in anything major. The only thing that they had appeared in before, you know, of course, the elephant in the room, uh, was they made a cameo in the Xbox 360 version of Sonic and Sega All-Stars Racing, where they were a playable driver? Which is like, what? <laughs> like, how, how did we get to that point? I don't know, but uh, we did. And so that, that was cool, I guess. It was nice to see them getting any kind of work whatsoever. But then of course, you know, they appeared as a playable fighter, downloadable fighter in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. And really that was, that's basically been their last major appearance, which was two years ago. Holy crap. <laughs> But, yeah, like, I don't know if Banjo and Kazooie will ever come back, and like, I know that's a really downer thing to say, but like, let's just face the facts here. They have not, again, they haven't starred in a game since this one, and Banjo Kazooie Nuts and Bolts sold very poorly. I can't imagine why. But, uh, enough of that doom and gloom kind of talk. Let's go stop by Humba Wumba's and see what parts she has for sale. Glad to see that, uh, Humbo, <laughs> Humbo, Mumbo and Humba are still feuding. Alright, so we can buy blueprints and parts. Let's buy parts first. Ooh! Look at all this stuff. This is fancy. Yes, give, give, give all of it to me, please. We got spoilers. 
help make land vehicles perform better. Hard to explain why Mumbo not understand airflow nonsense. Bumba. We got some spikes so that we can poke stuff. Also, Fudge Hog is a reference to uh, Viva Pinata. Because everyone knows what Viva Pinata is, right? That's that's one of Rare's best franchises. Actually, I say that jokingly, but it sold really well, all things considered. Um. You know, I think I just realized, I think there are more original... Are there? I don't know. I was about to say, I think there are more original Viva Pinata games than there are Banjo-Kazooie games, which, if that's true, saddens me tremendously. But again, I, I don't know if that's true, because I don't follow the Viva Pinata franchise. But uh, that's all the parts. Uh, should we buy blueprints? Oh yeah, they're, they're nice and cheap. I'll just, I'll, I'll take everything that you have, please. Alright. Yep. So, we bought, uh, basically everything, which is fine. Let's see, can I get up there right now? Hmm. There. Nope, just an alleyway. But yeah, there's not a whole lot of Showdown Town available to us right now, but that will change as we progress through the game, because we can actually acquire new parts that will upgrade the central trolley, which will enable us to do more things, so that's kind of cool. I do like that. Let's head into Act 2 of Nutty Acres, in a very Super Mario Sunshine-esque kind of way. But yeah, for those of you who have never seen Nuts and Bolts, what do you think of it? Because, like, it's kind of hard to find people who don't have opinions on Nuts and Bolts these days. So it's like, I don't know, I'm very interested in seeing just, like, how people respond to this kind of thing. I don't know, for some reason I always find that the more divisive games in a franchise are somehow the most interesting ones to talk about. Probably because they are divisive. Because I know that there are some people even here in chat right now, who are probably very disappointed by this game. And I don't blame them. But uh, I'm just wondering if opinions have changed with the benefit of hindsight, because I will admit, I was absolutely in the group of people who were like, excuse me, you look at how they massacred my boy. Like, that that's how I was when, the, when I first got Nuts and Bolts, but, you know, I finished it. Really, I have. So, it's grown on me. Again, I can't say that I prefer it over the original or Tui. Absolutely not, but uh, this this is the hardest thing I've ever done. It's almost like doing things on foot is sometimes easier. But I've grown to say that I can... I genuinely like this game. Like, I think it's a solid... 7 out of 10. It's a 7 out of 10. But I can't I can't go any higher than that. I will not go any higher than that. Now let's solve this uh, Jinjo combat. Sure, I'm up. So yeah, this is just a simple push the Jinjo around. But we do have the ability to choose a blueprint, so let's see, do I have the pieces necessary to make some of these? These are some old contraptions that I had made when I had last played Nuts and Bolts. No, I don't have enough. Do I have enough for... Yes, I do! Alright, we'll just use this. Oh yeah, this will be more than enough for what we need to accomplish. Let's push the Jinjo out of the arena. Nope, stabilize. Surprise, stabilize. Also, Jinjos turn into balls in this game. I don't know why. Great. Let's try that again. I lost because my, like, center of axis 
got pushed out first. Alright, uh, come here, you. Make fun of old Banjo, will you? I mean, everyone else in this game already does, so... Interesting. <laughs> that was that was an interesting physics lesson right there. No. Oh, you are cursed. Oh, you rotten. Come on, come on, come on. Yes, okay, cool. All right. Uh, let's see, let's go look for our first challenge, shall we? We'll explore Mumbo's farm. I gotta say, I do like how the worlds are constructed. Cause like, you can see this whole thing is just patchwork. You can see the, you can see the stitching in it. That's really nice. I will say, I do like this game's aesthetic. Like, I know it can seem kind of blocky and that kind of thing. I, I think that's the whole point, but it, it's like, it's like if you took the charming blockiness of an N64 model and like, took it to the next logical step. And I like it. I really do. It definitely doesn't look like much of anything else. I can say that for sure. I mean, the music is great because you know it's composed by Grant Kirkhope, and he and he does absolutely fantastic work. Okay. Note by this big egg. All right, so what's this challenge? Tick, tick, bang. <laughs> Why are you standing next to a ticking bomb? No, I think that's a good question. Hey, we referenced an older game. That means we're cool, right? Big metal bird. Well, we use grenade eggs, Banjo. We're probably more experienced than Mumbo is. Probably. Well, I hope for everyone's sake, um, he, he Bottles knows what to do. Otherwise, he's <laughs> probably gonna die again. All right, so we have to, we have a vehicle we can choose here. Or no, we have the log tractor. Okay, this part's gonna be really fast. Alright, so that gimmick there is, um, if you find a mumbo box in a challenge, it's a part that you can attach to your vehicle. So we got an additional small engine. So yeah, this is the mobile garage, which you can use by grabbing a vehicle and pressing B. It lets you construct and adjust things on the fly, but you cannot save anything. We'll just bolt the extra small engine on for more speed. Alright, let's go! Oh, wait, I need the actual bomb. That would be important. And... Plunk. Alright, now we gotta get to the airfield. Excuse me! Make sure to go through the volcano to actually reach where we need to go. Head left here. Oh, as you can see, your, uh, your parts will start flashing when they've uh, taken damage. Alright, we did it! Oops. 
Alright! So let's hope bottles can defuse this. Perfect. Remember kids, just smack a bomb hard enough and it will uh, disable. Oh, you put us here. Alright, that's fine. Alright, but that banks us another jiggy, so when we leave the area, we will be able to uh, collect it. As you can see, the worlds in uh, are really big. Which, is, I guess, is kind of why they made vehicles such an important part, because uh, ain't no way you're going to want to uh, hot-foot it around here. But we do have some way we can correct that later, but not right now. I do want those notes in the center. So we're going to have to take the uh, only obvious way to get there. Go all the way up the volcano. Nope, keep going. We'll get there eventually. Oh, and there's notes here, too. Excellent. I kind of wish, like, the different levels of musical notes made different sounds. Like, they get, they, maybe they're a little, uh, tinnier when you pick up the lo lesser value ones. Alright, now we gotta do the obvious thing here and just jump into the volcano. You get a good angle on where the notes are. Huh! And don't worry, if you run out of health, Kazooie just slaps Banjo until he gets his health back. If you're just exploring the world, um, this does nothing. Like, it doesn't cost you anything. However, if you are in a challenge and if you run out of health, then the challenge ends. Also, just walk in the lava, because who cares? You ever wonder a different world where they actually did a real Banjo 3 with di different graphics, etc.? Uh, there have been some demonstrations, like, um... I remember there was footage from Space World 2000 where they showed, like, uh, uh, Banjo-Kazooie models, like, running in terms of, like, you know, frame rate and that kind of stuff on what the GameCube could have done. So, I have to imagine that there was some kind of, like, idea behind, you know, just doing a straight Banjo 3. But then, you know, Microsoft happened and ruined everything. I, okay, that's a little harsh. By the time that um, Rare was in the process of being bought by Microsoft, a lot of the people who had worked... Oh, Ban just picking his nose. How delightful. Um, a lot of those people had already left the studio, so maybe Nintendo just saw that, hey, Rare ain't what they used to be, and so they just kind of cut their losses. But believe me, I, I imagine a world where that could happen frequently. Probably not as frequently as just Jershin, but, you know... I'm pretty sure he can't play this game without crying uncontrollably, so... <laughs> uh, anyway, great balls of fire. Oh, if the volcano erupted, that would be bad. That's fine. Let's see, get the rocks into the water. Um, let's see. Do I have the pieces to make anything? I don't think so. Because these are all pretty advanced. I definitely can't make these, because these are what I used my first time through. And they're the super advanced, so... No, let's use this. This should work. Alright, so our goal is simple. We gotta get to the rocks and push them into the water. 
Uh, might as well start with this one. Thankfully, you don't even really have to move them very much. You can actually just pick them up yourself and just roll them along. Hopefully the physics will take it to where it needs to go. Please go into the water. No, not quite. Nuts. Thankfully, we can just restart challenges whenever we want, so... Let's just restart and try again. drink and in it goes that's one should be able to fit through here just barely excuse me crab no just that's definitely not gonna roll enough if I push it it will Alright, that's good. Now I gotta get all the way over there. Although I do like how the water like drips down the screen. That is a nice touch. Oh, it's so far away. Looks like I should have enough time, though, for the trophy. Plink. I'm working on it. Oh, yeah. We got we got plenty of time. Now we just drive into the drink. No, that doesn't count. Oh, that'll work. Okay. Sweet. <laughs> That's really funny. I like that. Okay. Now we just gotta find the last challenge, and I think there's one more Jinjo scattered around here. But yeah, you can kind of see the holograms of people to tell you, like, who's got a challenge if you spot them, which is nice. But this is a new character, Trophy Thomas. He's, uh, he's basically just a show-off, but he is the guy with all the trophies, so we're gonna have to constantly humiliate him if we want to finish the game. <laughs> sure you're in the right game? I don't know. It's a fair point, Kazooie. Nope, I am definitely a bear, not a chicken. We'll see about that. your fastest vehicle. All right, well, let's choose... Thankfully, we got enough parts for this, so let's just get going. Yeah, this is a standard issue race. Just go through the checkpoints. Oh, well, I still made it, so it's fine. Yeah, there's a lot of people who would say that Banjo-Kazooie is more like a, a racing game than they would say that it's like a strict platformer, which makes sense. Did I mention it was the best of three? Well, just now. That's like when you're in Smash Brothers and you're like, okay, emergency best of three. Emergency best of three in just a desperate attempt to save your pride. So, uh, 
Guess we'll just have to do it to him. But yeah, this Diddy Kong Racing remake looks a little different than what I had expected. Which, hey, there is a game that needs to be remade. Oh, no. All right, we're fine. Don't mind me. Just making hay while the sun shines. Yuck, 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 yuck. All right, that's two of three. And that's another Jiggy for the pile. Fine. Although I, I do uh, I do like that, you know, you just accepted that you lost. That's a hard thing to do. Even I still struggle with that. All right, no, there's actually two Jinjo challenges we still have to complete. See, I think one of them is near where Klungo was in Act 1. Yeah, for whatever reason, well... Uh, each act, like, starts you in a different place, which... I don't know, that seems just a wee bit unnecessary. But that's just me. Don't worry, eventually we will acquire a part which will make finding Jinjo challenges much, much easier. Yes, hello. This is a Jinjo race challenge. Alright, it's just a straight up race. I'm alright with this. Well, that's horrifying. Just inflate yourself into a into a ball. You're not Lanky Kong. You, you can't do that. He trademarked that. Also, this game auto saves a lot. I forgot how frequently it does that. I'm sorry if that's distracting, but no, not much I can do about that. Eat my dust, dust eater. Oh, there goes the little bunny. Well, that was easy enough. I'm gonna change vehicles. Because I need, I need that speed. Oh, and in case if you're wondering, the musical notes are present in every act of an area, so it's like, you know... Uh, it's not like the blue coins in Super Mario Sunshine, where you can only access certain things in certain, uh, acts. Oh! It's a little information booth. Much famous Loco Coco Tree. It make biggest, best, and hardest coconut in the world, but only get one a year. Interesting. I sure hope nothing bad happens to it. Hello, little buddy. This is a Jinjo taxi challenge. Get the Jinjo to his place uh, fast enough, and you'll get a token. Well, I mean, you, you, you have legs. They look like they work just fine. But then again, you know, Jinjos have never been the best at uh, saving themselves. Alright, let's go. Alright, so when uh, you need to carry someone, stop by their position, and they'll hop into your vehicle, crazy taxi style. Unfortunately, uh, you don't get to pull off fancy tricks for money, and you don't get to hear offspring music while you drive. Which is really the biggest letdown. I mean, 
Are you really even playing Crazy Taxi if you're not hearing yeah, 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 all the time? I mean, I guess it, I guess technically you are, but then you're just playing a pale imitation. It's like, what are you even doing with your life? If you're gonna do something, go all the way with it. Also, I like how we're immediately back where we started, like nothing was accomplished. But that's a token. Let's see, we're just gonna jump, oh, um. Yeah, we're just, we're just gonna jump right back to Showdown Town. Alright, things are actually going fairly smoothly so far. Aside from the, uh, the opening. But then again, the opening is always rough when you play this game, because, uh, it just saddens me considerably. So yeah, every four trophies you collect, you'll get another Jiggy, which you can pick up from uh, Trophy Thomas's Jiggo then. Fortunately, I'm running over a penguin, but he's also on top of the steep slope. We'll need a uh, correct upgrade before we're able to do anything about that. Alright, so now it's time to vend some Jiggies. We have a whole three Jiggies to work with. Get, get Umanaka comboed, which is fun. Uh, and then we just gotta pick up each Jiggy. I mean, I guess we could take it just to the vending machine right there, but like, we gotta do that so many times. And then we just drive into it. We're at to five Jiggies. We've opened up two new acts. Ah, when you collect enough Jiggies, occasionally, uh, Mumbo will just give you parts for free. So we got a small engine, small fuel, small propellers, an egg gun, and a small ammo. Nice. Oh, we got new blueprints. So yeah, the game does do a good job of rewarding you as you play the game, which is good. We got the Humba Copter and the Humba Tank. Handy. All right, but uh, as Log was saying, certain acts will let you face Grunty. Uh, defeating Grunty is how you will obtain upgrades for your Showdown Town trolley, which will allow you to get to more places in Showdown Town. So these challenges are kind of important. Oh yeah, sometimes uh, different acts have uh, different uh, times of day. Sometimes the, you know, in the morning, in the night, in the afternoon. It's just like my intro. Alright, here's Grunty in all of her decapitated glory. So what's up with you? Grunty's Loco Coco. I do like that Gruntilda is back to her rhyming ways, unlike in a Banjo Tooie. Ooh, that's a long time. The daddy of all nuts. Please never say that again. I will, I will pay you all of my money to never say that again. I mean, the jokes write themselves. <laughs> oh, daddy of all nuts. I hate that immensely. <laughs> that, that actually physically hurt me. <laughs> um, you know what? I have an idea. I'm gonna choose this. Oops, I bumped my mic. All right, here's my plan. I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give this one shot. Jump out immediately. Just pick up the nut. Come on. I've done that before. Because, as you can see, 
that's just because the coconut is in fact an object, if I get close enough, I should just be able to pull it out of the, uh... Come on. Nope. Arr. Nuts. Alright. Well, I gave it a try. Let's try this other strategy. And we'll just go full blur. Oh. Well, that, <laughs> that was easy enough. Oh, boy. See, that's where the fun in this game comes from. When you discover, like, the incredibly stupid solutions to these games. That's genuinely when this game is at its best. But now we've got high grip wheels. This will allow us to climb up those steep slopes, though they do reduce our speed a bit. Nice try, Grunty. But yeah, trust me. Later challenges will have somehow even dumber solutions to them, and I'm actually kind of excited to show them off, because I think it's when you're able to really think outside of the box in order to solve one of the challenges given to you that Nuts and Bolts really shows you what it's capable of. Like, genuinely. I, I say that without a shred of irony. This game is at its best when you're somehow able to just break it. But there are some Jinjo challenges we need to find, so uh, let's find them. And by find them, I mean look them up. This is not the Jinjo I was expecting to find, but it is a Jinjo. Excuse me, I'm just gonna let myself in. Jinjo fetch! Oh, a Globo! Alright. I wonder if it uh, has any magical properties in it. Hiking over the volcano. Okay. Well, I mean, if the Globo was complaining about the heat, it kicked into the pool completely by accident. Mm hmm, yes, yeah, sure. Mm hmm, sure. Uh, let's see. So I want to choose... Can I make... Nope, I can't make any of my super fancy ones yet, but that's okay. That should work. Alright, so we need to head to the lagoon at the base of the volcano. Ha! Alright, you can press the X button to dive under the water, and press and hold the A button to swim quickly. Hello, little buddy. Oh, it looks like a little stuffed Globo. But yeah, as you can see, your health will deplete uh, while you're underwater. So it's just like the magical, all-encompassing health of Super Mario 64. Alright, here you go. I gotcha, your Globo. <laughs> and, mo and bizarre looking friend. Try not to get in the way of my foot next time. Oh boy. Alright. No, I don't want to go back to Showdown Town yet. I would like to. We need to go to the airstrip. That is where another Jinjo lies. Actually... Let's take to the sky, shall we? But 
yeah, once, you, once you're able to start really building flying vehicles and uh, vehicles that let you swim and that kind of stuff, that's where things... Oh, just stick the landing, Banjo. Jinjo Hurling. Sounds like a bad trip after uh, too much time at the all-you-can-eat buffet. So we just gotta send this Jinjo flying a requisite distance. I was in a bear chat room? Why were you in a bear chat room? Suspicious. Alright, so we need... we'll need some speed. Which is thankfully what this is for. No, I've got a better idea. We'll send you down the slope. Yeah, in these kind of challenges, gravity is your best friend here. Just kind of... Boink! Perfect. Sweet. All right, back to Showdown Town. Yeah, this game does have some pretty bad loading screens. Alright, so now that we have the high grip wheels, we can climb up the slippery, uh, green slopes. Such as the one right in front of, uh, Log's factory. So this will not only help us get to new areas, but help us make shortcuts. Actually, we jump. Just... Ugh. Ow! Unfortunately, none of your vehicles have airbags, which I really kind of... Hold up. Wait a minute. Oh! Nuts. It was a good idea. All right, please let me get back in. Okay, so where do we want to go first? Actually, I know what I should do first. I'm gonna bank the jiggy we got. Just take it over here. Uh, what? And with six jiggies, we open up the third world. Banjo Land. And deliver it to its Plinth. However, in order to access Banjo Land, we do need the high grip tot. The... What are they supposed to be called? I think they're just called high grip wheels. I already forgot what they're named. I'm such a fraud. Take this. Great. Great. There we go. Alright, I'm gonna call my vehicle back. That, that was impressive. I didn't even think I could do that, but, uh... You learn something new about games every day. I, I think there's something... Oh! Darn it. Please come back. Thank you.
There's Trophy Thomas. And this is where we can, uh... Drop off this Plinth. To unlock World 3! Banjo Land! Let's see. Meet Trophy Thomas here today. Wow, so cool. Oh, that's how we, uh. Jiggies. Oh! Activate a warp pad. However, you can only warp if you're in a vehicle. Though, thankfully, we can't activate them just by walking on them. How many worlds? There are. Six worlds. Five main worlds, uh, and the final world, which is Spiral Mountain. But yeah, each zone, I think, has at least five, but I think every zone has six acts in it, so there's, like, 36 separate areas, so to say. But yeah, Trophy Thomas will let you jump to any challenge where you've collected a Jiggy so that you can try again for, uh, the trophy. Uh, let's see. Let's just, um, hmm. There's so many options available to us now. I don't know where to start. Yummy. Thankfully, with the high grip wheels, we can now collect more mumbo crates. I think that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna sweep the area for mumbo crates. It is still satisfying to pick up bunches of notes in a row, though. And also crash. That, that's still satisfying. I sure hope we're all insured doing this. Otherwise, our insurance premiums, whew, they're gonna go through the roof. All right, so this is crate number 11. Sorry, I'm just, I'm looking up crate locations. Excuse me, mister. You know what, as long as I'm here, I might as well grab that Jiggy. I will say, the Jiggies do look particularly shiny in this game. Especially with the nice sunset glow reflecting off of them. Alright, we've opened a new act in Banjo Land. Ah! So we haven't met Klungo in the overworld yet, because uh, we weren't able to get to him yet until we got the high grip wheels. Oh yeah, Mumbo juggles his eyeballs, and when you talk to him, they just zip right back into his skull. We got some more high grip wheels and another tray. Do, 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 uh. Hmm. I should make this jump, no problem. Alright, well, I wouldn't say no problem, but we made the jump, which is the important thing. Oh, hello. Hi. 
This is crate number 12. Unk. I am I am having a trouble. I am just I woof woof woof. All right, now that we're all lined up, let's go. Oh, hold on. Oh. Oh, wait. Can I just do this? Nope. Fortunately, I cannot. We'll just have to come back later. This one holds standard wings. Ooh, now we can make flying vehicles. I like flying. I remember. I remember when I could fly using a, a flight pad. Those. Those were some good times, man. Oh, it's Mr. Fit. What brings you here? Trapdoor tower combination. So this will help us um, unlock another crate. Let's see. So his combination is. Let's pay up. It's up there, which we won't be able to reach yet. Five, eight, nine, seven. Do I have any paper on me? No, you know what? I'm going to put that in chat so I can write that down later. Remember, modern problems require modern solutions. Okay. So, when I'm actually able to collect that, I'll remember the combination for it. But yeah, you'll only be able to... Uh, talk to Mr. Fit while he's stopping to catch his breath. And we just happen to get lucky there. Oh, hello. What box number is this? 13, okay. I like, ooh. Let's put this right here for now. Well, this takes us back to the Banjo Land area. Excellent. in the trolley. Thank you. Alright. Got those notes. So let's do a, go drop off this crate. Honestly, what's to stop me from... Uh, What's to stop me from just uh, driving past this and then... Oh, it's... No, I should be able to... Yeah! I should just be able to do this, right? Uh, well, not if I sink. Feels like I should be able to just kind of cheese my way there. I mean, this game does have some pretty good water physics, though. I gotta give it that. 
unfortunately, it does not look like that is cheesable, which is tragic, but uh, I'm sure we'll survive. So let's see, this crate holds a sinker, or two sinkers, and a Volgar's fist. Hey, more parts is always useful. Come on, Banjo, work with me here. Actually, this isn't even the way I wanted to go. Oh yeah, because I drove up over there to go this way. Yeah, as you can see, I'm not quite as familiar with the map in Nuts and Bolts as I am with the other Banjo-Kazooie games. Let's, see, let's talk to you first. This is a new character. His name is Pikelet, and he runs the uh, police force around here. As you can see, he's a literal pig cop. Oh, this will introduce us to a new little side quest, the Jinjos and Minjos. So basically scattered around town, uh, some Jinjos have been wrongfully locked up, and Minjos are running around. So we gotta make things right. Don't mind me. Oh, hey, look! It's everyone's favorite neglectful polar bear. Foggy! Uh, is he eating his scarf? Oh, so now you gotta earn yourself a living. So, you can upgrade your abilities here. So, you can upgrade your speed, which increases your base movement speed, which is really nice. Your strength enables you to pick up bigger objects, walk faster while carrying them, and swing your wrench more often. And your stamina will increase your uh, ability, your health, basically. Be the endurance bear. Alright, so now our base movement speed is increased. Wait, exercising actually works? Yes, it does. But you gotta commit to it, Boggy. Stamina. You're positively blooming. I only sell the bare essentials. I appreciate that joke. Alright. So, now as you can see, we run a little bit faster. Unlock the new warp point. See, our increased movement speed will help us. Oh, hold on. Oh, is this not ready yet? It might not be ready yet. We might have to unlock more of the game to be able to... ...accomplish this. Which is fine. Which is fine. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, the physics in this game can be a little whack sometimes. Should just be able to use the trolley, though, to just uh, bounce our way up. I don't think we can cross this gap. Oh, almost. Doesn't look like... Oh, yeah. 
Yeah, honestly, this is an area that we're really not equipped to properly explore yet, but I'm already here, and darn it, I'm still angry that uh, Log didn't let us get a Jiggy before we were supposed to, so I'm just gonna do this out of spite. Because I, I want to explore, darn it. I'm the one in control here. I get to, de to decide how this goes. Take that. Everything meaningful I've ever accomplished was out of spite. Spite is one of the most powerful forces in the universe. Let me think. Oh. That's an... No, come on. Banjo, come on. Come on. Come on, you can do it. There you go. What are you doing here? I don't remember there being an NPC here. Oh well. Let's go. Plonk. What does this do? Only one way to find out. Ah, that's how we get a Jinjo out. Okay. I don't want to do that just yet. Because there are some things that we won't we won't be able to help every Jinjo and capture every Minjo with the upgrades we have available to us, so. No sense jumping the gun on that. I have to admit, this has been like a nice, chill kind of experience. There, there's been some grumbling, but that's, you know, it's kind of hard to avoid that with Banjo Kazooie Nuts and Bolts. But I'm genuinely enjoying myself. We got a large taxi seat. So now we can carry either multiple small passengers or one big passenger. Options. Alright, that's one of the easiest Jinjos to free. We're gonna make our way back to the police station. Actually, why don't I just take a warp pad? warping is nice and quick. Oh, is this where the switch is? Hmm. Just take the stairs here. Oh. Go on, get up there, Banjo. I would absolutely hide some notes around here. Just go ahead, just just push the barbed wire banjo. What could possibly go wrong? Ooh. Keep going. Keep going, you can do it. Oh, you need the combination for this one. Oh. But here's the thing, I already know what the combination is, so you do have to pay for it if you want to get it. Interesting. Alright, that's fine. Also, you can pick up the notes with your tractor beam, which is nice. It's useful if the notes just kind of like hovering there, you just kind of yoink. Right. Um. Oh, 
All right, let's go get our combination, I guess. But somehow we stuck the landing there. What's up, Bottles? And Bottles runs an information station here. <laughs> I used to be dead, but fortunately I got over that. That's pretty funny. This is the stuff that you've already learned, in case if you forgot how to do things. You can get some useless rubbish. Um, stop and swap truth. But it costs 6,000 notes. I don't think, are there enough notes in the game to actually buy that? I don't know. But I just want the tower combination. Which is 5248. Oh, it does change! Alright, color me impressed. Good job, video game. We got some spotlights. No, oh, come on. All right, so let's go crack open that safe. No, come on, Banjo. Isn't this high octane? This is what you were all lo expecting to see, right? Okay. Oh, they just tell you. Well, that's kind of unfortunate. I thought they'd make you actually remember it. Oh, well. Go on over and take this to Mumbo. All right, what's in the box? A gyroscope. Okay, that will enable us to perform tricks. Where's my car? Okay. Um. I'm gonna go over this way, I think. Yes, that is correct. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna finish trying to collect... Uh, ...the stuff that's available, do what I can, and then uh, I think we'll call it quits for today. Oh, you're one of the Minjos. Okay. Well, we know where you are. That's good information for later. I think they expect you to, like, spring up to there. Or something, but, uh, we can do this instead, I think. Aha! Oh, look at me. I don't even know what number box this is. But I don't really care. Okay, so if you're carrying something in the tractor beam, you don't take any damage. That's number 34. Alright, well, we definitely got that crate out of order, but, uh... I don't care. I will, however, first unlock this warp pad. You 
should be able to warp while you've got something in your trolley. Yes? Yes, cool, okay. Alright, so what's in this crate that we definitely should not have been able to get right now? Small propeller, a sail, and a floater. Okay, the floater will actually help us, because that'll let us make boats and stuff. I'll go back to the docks. Okay, there was a crate that I had missed. Oh, that's a fence. This should be what we need. Oh, the, the, the crates have the rare logo on them. That's cute. Neat. Oh, apparently there's another crate in that we can, uh, get on the docks. And some musical notes! But yeah, as you can see, there's just so much stuff scattered around Showdown Town. It, it's a genuinely great hub world. Excuse me, mister. Yeah, we just gotta climb up to the top of this other crane. Oh, it's in the drink. I gotta get I gotta get my cargo. Ah, there we go. Looks like I'm swimming to shore. Yeah, that's unfortunately the bad part about games with advanced physics engines, because sometimes you know, the crate can just straight up bounce into the into the water. Don't think I can call back my vehicle and still keep the uh, crate in it, which is unfortunate, but thankfully, uh, due to boggy speed boost, it'll take us less time to get there. Small gains, small gains. Alright, we're almost out of new mumbo crates we can we're supposed to have been able to collect. There's Mr. Fit again. I'm really glad that like things become magnet in it magnetic in your trolley just to Try to minimize the jostling. And the frustration of things constantly falling out. Alright. Open them up, Mumbo. 
un bol combo. We got a tow bar and a speco spy. This is an incredibly important part because the speco spy will show us the um, location of Jinjo challenges on our mini map so that we don't have to, you know, actually look for them. We just know where they are. Oh, I should have taken the warp pad again. That that shows you how much I have not played this game recently. It's just like the <laughs> cargo room. Haha, <laughs> cargo burr. Oh. Can I just go up this? Yes, I can. Huh. You know what? No, I'm gonna leave that. But anyway, this is the pier area. Which introduces us to King Jingling. He runs the Bingo Palace. <laughs> so, how do you play? It's actually quite simple. What you need to do is select a token that you collect from the Jinjo challenges. Uh, fill in enough spots on the bingo sheet, either on row or column, to earn a prize. But as you can see, you can only put tokens in the correct colored slots. So, you'll have to complete different types of challenges in order to earn enough tokens to earn enough prizes. There are enough Jinjos in the game to earn everything, so you don't have to worry about, uh, if you're thorough in completing your challenges, you'll be able to unlock everything. Jinjo window cleaning. Interesting. But yeah, you can earn both notes and parts by uh, playing Jinjo Bingo. No, I definitely need that note. Not just because it'll help me buy stuff, but because it'll help me keep my obsessive compulsiveness at in check. Oh yeah, you, I, I think I said this before, but you will not be able to talk to Mr. Fit if he is running. You'll have to just wait until he gets winded. But hello. This is Jolly Roger, or as he goes in this world, Jolly Dodger. As, as he says himself, he's a little bit dodgy. But he has jiggies for sale. You can buy uh, extra jiggies. However, he only has five, but uh, as you can see, they cost a fair amount of notes to get. But um, Jolly Dodger will change position every time you load the map. So you'll have. He only spawns in predetermined places, but the place that he picks is random. Unfortunately, he only ever has the five jiggies available, so, uh... You know, it's not very much, but it's something. But over here, after we cross the broken pier, that really should be fixed by now, we'll find the one and only Klungo. First, let's go around back, because I'm pretty sure there's a mumbo crate here. Yep, and one behind a big laser wall. We'll be able to get that later. Alright, let's talk to Klungo. Oh, I put the uh, crate in the wrong place. But uh, just like he said at the end of Banjo-Tooie, he's making a video game. Better than Master Chef. 
Hold on, let me uh, get this box out of your way so that I can, we can actually see you. There we go. Instructions. Press A to make Klungo jump. End of instructions. Yep, it's a very simple. But this is Hero Klungo saves to world. So it's simple. Just, uh, you walk forward automatically. Just press A to jump as Klungo literally carries the world to freedom. Each time you clear one of these challenges, you'll earn notes. It's very high tech. Congratulations, you have win. But for that, we get some notes. As you can see, as you progress through the game, more levels will become available. If you bump into an enemy, you will, you'll die. Just like in real life. Thankfully, you can try as many times as you want. As you can see, some of them get pretty picky with the jumps. Also, enjoy the nice 8-bit rendition of Klungo's battle theme from Banjo-Tooie. All right. Not bad. Not bad at all. Come on, let me out of here, please. Thank you. That's enough of that. Oh, the crate did save. My car did not, though. But yeah, we'll just have to come back later as uh, Klungo develops more levels to earn more notes. Actually, there is another Mumbo Crate we can find around here, so let me just, uh... Vehicle... Aha! This will get us to where we need to go. Come on, we're almost there. Just, just a little for Yeah, there you go. Now we're picking up some real speed. Man, we've, we've really gotten quite a few notes. I honestly did not think we'd have this many already. Yeah, if you jump onto a tightrope, uh, you'll immediately, like, go into your Whoa, I'm about to fall over kind of thing, so be careful with it. There we go. All right, so I think we'll just take these mumbo crates over. But yeah, that's basically the bulk of Showdown Town. There is still um, one area that we really can't access yet, but it's pretty small, and we won't be able to see it for 
quite a long time, but, uh, you know, just keep that in your back pocket for now. Oops. Mumbo, I wasn't even close to you. What did you do that for? I mean, to be fair, I was barreling right towards you, but you know I never hit you, right? Alright, so with these two crates, we get a freeze-easy and some balloons. Alright, neat. Let's see, that's all the Momo crates that we're supposed to have collected. And we've gotten basically the gist of the things that we need to do, so, uh, on that autosave. I think this is going to be a good place to call it quits for today. Banjo, why were you rotating like that? Anyway, uh, thank you for stopping by, everybody. I know that this has been an experience, but, uh... I hope that for those of you who have never seen this game, you're kind of understanding why some people both like and dislike Banjo-Kazooie Nuts and Bolts. And those of you that have played it already, uh, I hope you're prepared to maybe actually see how this game uh, plays out. Because you might not have finished it for, you know, <laughs> completely justifiable reasons. If you'd like to stay up to date on the things that I do, I have a Twitter and a Discord that you can see in my information panels. But for now, this is The Defender, signing out. See you later!